Miss Loretta Young. Hello. Thank you for accepting my invitation to come back here again tonight. Because tonight, well, I have a public confession to make. Which, while it will come as no surprise at all to those who know me, is a direct answer to a direct question in this first letter. Dear Loretta, it says, and uh, by the way, it's signed Ruth, do you do everything like you say in those quotations from Shakespeare and the Bible and all? My husband says he doesn't think so. Ruth, your husband's right. These quotations from the Bible and Shakespeare and all are the ideals to which I aspire. I certainly don't claim to have accomplished them. Now, I would say the most and the very best that could be said for me is that I try. Now, this letter is from a young man named Ben Cabot. He sent it to us in the hope that it would be an inspiration to us. Well, it was. The letter tells a tale of courage, and it tells it so simply and so well that we have made no attempt to embellish it. Dear Loretta, he says, this is the story of Inga Helborg. From the first moment I met her, I knew it was a story that I would have to follow to the very end. There was something about her, something which I can only compare with, well, the exterior of a bank. Not too fancy, perhaps, but giving promise of great treasure within. The truth is, I first saw her in the bank. We were both waiting to see the bank president, but for very different reasons. Next Wednesday, 10.30. Uh, I'll tell Mr. Law. All right. Uh, Mr. Pfeiffer. Oh, good morning, Mr. I... Monday. Hello, Pfeiffer. I want to get this escrow moving fast. Yes, well, I, I have the papers here. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm here first. Nonsense. I had an appointment. Oh, but I'm here first. I phoned yesterday. And I sent a letter two weeks ago. You'll have to be patient, miss. Mr. Mundy's a very busy man. I've got a million things to do today. Uh, then I would suggest that you do them. Who are you to make suggestions to me? Who does one have to be to make suggestions to you? I'll be back later. Yeah. Oh, poor man. I'm sure he does have his troubles. But... I am here first. Just what did you want? I want to see the president of your bank. Mr. Lowell is busy. A million things to do, yeah? Yes. Good. I am one of those million. What's it about? About something Mr. Lowell should not do. Your name? Inge Helborg. Inge Helborg. Yeah. Your business? Farmer. Far Farmer? Yeah. Oh, yes, I remember now, the Helborg Farm. Yeah. Foreclosure of unpaid note, subject deceased. File 22. File 22 is my father. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you don't need to be sorry, sir. Sven Helborg was the best farmer in Minnesota. And if he had not been sick for so long, it was only me to look after him. Your note would have been paid by now. Miss Helborg, the farm no longer belongs to you. Well, you have a right to your own opinion even if you were wrong. And you are wrong. Now, may I see your president, please? You may not. But I must see him. You cannot see him. Mr. Pfeiffer, I will see Mr. Lowell, no matter what you say. I will say no more. Oh. Well, good day, sir. You should get to see Mr. Lowell over my dead body. Well, we all have to go sometime. Yeah. What do you mean by that, Mr. Cabot? She'll see Mr. Lowell, whatever the condition of your body. Don't you agree? My second encounter with Inga convinced me that I'd met something unique, an irresistible force. The encounter took place at the home of bank president Thad Lowell, whom we might call the immovable object. As a member of the prison farm board, Thad Lowell always started the meetings with the same remark. Thad, for ten years you've started every meeting with the same remark. <laughs> Let's leave statistics to Ben Cabot. Yes. By the way, how is our young brain mechanic? 
Prison psychiatrist is the title, Mr. Lowe. Ben Cabot, prison psychiatrist. <laughs> well, let's get going. I've got a million things to do today. Well, here comes one of the things. Refreshments. Oh, are you Mr. Lowe? Yes. Thanks. You must be the new domestic. Oh, no, sir. I am a farmer. You're a what? Oh, for 14 years I have been a farmer. Uh, Mr. Lowell, when you have time, I would like to talk with you about it. With me? Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. Sir? Thank you. You're very welcome. Well, let's get down to business. Well, I brought my report on occupational therapy with me. <laughs> Why don't you read it, Cabot? Report on work therapy at King Carden Retention Farm. Retention Farm? It's a new word. They're not as harsh as prison farm. Uh, excuse me, please, uh, Mr. Lowell, when you do get the moment. I'll be waiting outside. Gentlemen, as I was saying, retention farm is not as harsh as prison farm. Excuse me. Speak with me about what? Uh... Sit down, Mr. Lowell, please. I am Inga Helborg, a daughter of Sven, a file 22, foreclosure of unpaid note, subject deceased. Oh, so that's it? Yeah. Well, I can tell you right off, Miss Helborg, the matter is legal. There's not a chance of contesting it. But I am contesting it here now, this minute. On what grounds? Well, on the grounds that there are 3,000 acres lying fallow. Waiting for seed and no one to sow it. Well, really, we're not concerned with seed, Miss Helborg. Oh, not seed. People. A farm is people. Plowing and planting and working and praying. And fighting the stem dust and the winter kill and the big winds. You'll have to understand a bank is a business. Oh, I agree. And a good farm run by good people is a good business. Undoubtedly. Hmm? You'll have to realize that I owe a responsibility to my depositors. But they will get their money. I have already sold the livestock, and that, together with one good crop, will do it. The North 1500 in corn, and the South in wheat. But uh, will there be a crop? You bet. Uh, trust me. Trust you? Yeah. Uh, like your depositors trust you. Well, I guarantee my depositors a certain reserve. And I guarantee you everything I have. My promise. I'm sorry, Miss Helberg. The knowledge that they are eating food produced by their own hands has been most gratifying, along with the sense of accomplishment. Go on, Cabot, go on. Don't let me interrupt. Miss Helberg, the matter is settled. I've made up my mind. Oh, I don't think we should discuss it in front of these gentlemen. Uh, but since you have started, you're wrong. You haven't made up your mind. You are very uncertain. Why shouldn't I be uncertain about trusting a, a young girl to run a 3,000-acre farm? But you use that word every day of your life. It's written on your building, bank and trust in gold letters. That means you are to trust us. But I do trust you. Naturally you do. We're a solid institution. We've proven that through the years. And what are the Minnesota farmers proved? Oh, why, your bank was built with those lily kernels of corn and a hard red spring wheat. <laughs> She's got you there, Thad. <laughs> this is your Minnesota farmer. Oh, you bet. Fourteen years. All right. Fourteen years. Very well. I'll give you 180 days to pay that note. Oh, good. Six months. Yeah. Compound interest. Yeah. And don't you come crying to me about winter kill, drought, or the cinch bug. If you lose your crop, you lose the farm. Oh, I don't lose my farm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lowell. Now, if you don't mind, young lady, may we go on with our meeting? Uh, but, sir, there's something more. What is something more? Uh, the meeting. Uh, they told me about it at the bank. Uh, who's chairman? I'm chairman. Good. Yes, Miss Helberg? Uh, permission to address the committee, please. 
You've had the floor up to now. You may as well continue. Thank you. Gentlemen, Minnesota farmhand doesn't like to work for a woman. And I am a much in need of experienced workers. What in blazes has this got to do with a prison farm? I have the floor, sir. Yes, you have the floor. Thank you. Now, in Sweden, we have no walls around the prison farm. We have an eight-foot cyclone fence around Kincardine with barbed wire on the top. Oh, I have only drift fence around my farm. Are you suggesting that we let you have some prisoners to work your farm? Uh, yeah, uh, but for good pay, of course. Now, also in Sweden, uh, prison farmers have two-week vacation. With pay. That's what I've been saying for years. The keystone of a prison farm is trust. Tear down the fences. What, what a waste of good cyclone fence. Oh, but what a saving of people. Why don't you pick three or four men to start with? Give them a chance. And if it fails, Cabot, what then? The fences stay up. Well? I move we make Cabot responsible for this experiment. So moved. Seconded. Oh, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And, uh, good day. To tell you, yeah. One was a confidence man, another a petty thief, another stole cars. Uh, are the good workers? They're willing to try. Good. Bring them in. Okay, boys. How do you do? I am Inga Helborg, and I want you to know that you are all very welcome here. This is your home. people who grew them. Hold on, God! Oh, save your breath, yes, dear. I get them. Give. Oh, Ben! Well, I heard you were renting rooms for the fishing season. Oh, how nice to see you. Well, Jesse's already told me that the crops are good and it looks like rain, so there's nothing to ask except how are you, Inga? Uh, this time of year, Ben, a farmer feels no better than the weather. The gold is there, waiting to be mined. But you wonder if some trick of the wind, like a thief, will steal it away. <laughs> <laughs> there are more thieves around here than the wind, believe me. Yes, see, we have a guest. Oh, so? Yeah. I would warn you, then. Look out for your possessions, Mr. Cabot. Our friend Inga has jailbirds in the house. <laughs> yes, see, Mr. Cabot brought those men here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And does he know that his friends have been stealing food from me? Oh, you're yeah, some cookies, like a little child with candy. Do you still trust them, Inga? Of course. They have made a wonderful crop. They are the Hellborg farm. And what about Charlie? Life is not worth a thing with him around. Oh, yes, see. Hi, Charlie. What gives, Cabot? Checking up? The fishing rod? I do my job. I give a full day's work. Not as surely so. No man could do more. Sit down, Charlie. Ah. Dear Lord, we thank you for this food, for the blessings we have had today and for those about to come. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Now we eat. Mr. Kravitz. Milk, Charlie. Oh, thank you. I hear they got a new machine that counts the barley to make sure none's been swiped. Oh, I hadn't heard, Charlie. Maybe the machine's been swiped. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't any trouble like that since Charlie left. You guys get funnier all the time. Shh. The 
the rain. It's not too heavy, Miss Halberg. And no wind. Hey, Jesse, did you ever find them cookies? No, I didn't. And then I do. Shh, wait. It's hay. We're being hailed out. Did you ever see what hail does to a stalk of wheat? It's very interesting. One moment it is there, and the next, gone. Thank you for pizza and cry if you want to. Let yourself. Sure, quit. To listen to me, you'd think this never happened to a farmer before. Well, I want you all to know the wheat is gone. But the corn is there, and that is good. And tomorrow we will start plowing the South 1500. And we will put it to millet. Yeah? Yeah. Now, we shall eat, huh? The indomitable courage of Inga Helborg met the impossible and conquered it. Yet her greatest test was still to come. Uh, 200, 210, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 270, 280. This, together with his 3,000, and we have enough to pay off the note. But you never thought we could do it. But I always knew you could do it. Someday you will all have land of your own, and you will do it over and over and over. What's next, Miss Helberg? Next, we work the ground to put in rye and barley. Uh, but first, we deliver the money. Charlie, has the yeep enough gas? Yeah, filled her up just like you said. That's good. Hey, you're not going to let Charlie deliver all that money. Oh, no, I thought you could drive me. But, uh, and now that you mention it, Hank, uh, there's plenty for me to do around here. Uh, Charlie, do you mind going alone? Hmm? Me? With all that money? Yeah, you. With all this money. Do you know where the bank is? Well, sure. Good. You go directly to Mr. Pfeiffer or Mr. Lowell. And be sure you get the receipt. And don't stop for anything until you deliver the money. And uh, carry it in a safe place. Yeah? Now, go. Go. Charlie. Look, this, this is pretty important, for many reasons. Is it? Yeah, you see. Forget it. Is uh, something wrong? Yes, gosh, blame it, Inga. Why did you have to do it? Because at that moment, Charlie needed an answer. But you could have delivered the money. I could have delivered it. You could have sent it by wire. And leave Charlie in doubt for the rest of his life? No. Do we trust him or don't we? Well, of course we trust him. That isn't the point. Nothing must dissuade the prison board. And Not even one slip by one person. The temptation is too great for Charlie. And the whole cause is lost. Yeah, I know. I know that too, Beck. But before we can tear down any fences at Kim Carding, we must tear down the fences in our own minds. Are you accusing me of a lack of trust? Look, I've made a study of the criminal mind. Who are you to decide what the boundaries of trust are? Oh, Ben. Who does one have to be? Come now, we have some coffee, huh? 
No, your man wasn't in here yesterday. No. No, he didn't call. Thank you. No word from Charlie? No. That's it. Charlie would have delivered the money if he could have. Something has happened to him. You're amazing. No, Ben. Charlie and I have worked together. I have felt his backache, and I have seen his fingers blister, I know. Well, the fact remains that Charlie is missing, and so is the money. Hello? Yeah? Yes? Are you sure? Yes, I'll tell him. No, we'll call you back, thank you. What is it? He found a jeep wrecked in a gully. Abandoned. Charlie was supposed to be here yesterday. Yeah. Instead, he is mysteriously absent. Yeah. Your car is found wrecked by the roadside. I know. What happened? Logic should tell you. He ran the car off the road in a desolate spot and absconded with the money. Proving, among other things, that bankers should not trust impulsive young ladies. Uh, Mr. Lowell, you are wrong about Charlie. I know him. I have worked with him. You're wrong. What do you do with a stubborn young lady like this? Well, if you're me, you believe her. You realize that there are fences in your own mind that have to be torn down. Fences you never knew were there. Pfeiffer, take a memo. Regarding file 22, foreclosure. What's up, Gillis? A oh, man just fainted. He's badly hurt. Badly hurt? Get a doctor. Oh, he said he wanted to see you. Charlie! Oh, Charlie, you're hurt. I had an accident. Get it off the road. I know, I know. I hitched a ride and, and I fainted. Oh. I'm sorry I'm late. You did fine, Charlie. No man could do better. Oh, here's the money. Oh. Thank you, Charlie. Uh. Here's your money, Mr. Lowell. Charlie. Here. Cypher, take a memo. There'll be an emergency meeting of the prison farm board to discuss the matter. I'm sorry, Miss Elborg. Oh, now don't you worry. We will take you home, Charlie. And soon you will be well again. And then you can help me with the rye and the barley. Yeah? Oh, you bet. Cabot finishes his letter with, Somehow, Loretta, of all the people I've ever met, Inga Helborg would be the hardest to forget. And I just thought that you, too, might like to know about her. Sincerely, Benjamin Cabot. Oh, thanks very much, Mr. Cabot. I not only liked hearing about her, but I loved playing her. Because she's the kind of uncluttered person who is honest enough not to pigeonhole people. Uh, Emerson, in one of his essays, takes the reverse attack on this. Listen to this quote. Trust men, and they will be true to you. Treat them greatly, and they will show themselves great. Oh, I like that. Don't you? Well, good night. I'll see you next week. This is Loretta Young again. Next week, same time, same station.